in all aspects of turmoil and challenge that we may face, be it a cyber attack, a power grid attack, a nuclear attack, whatever it could be, what do you, what do you want to have in order? You want to have your mental health in order. You want to have your financial health in order. You want to have your physical health in order. And, and you certainly want to have your friends and community dialed in. All of the above. Right. This is about control. Everybody knows. Everyone complies. Where the kinds of pros. I don't need a plane. I just hit the road. I do what I want. I can't sell my soul. Market about the crash. This is what you chose. Ruin in the country. I've been best to go. You're going to take the mark. I take never rolls. I'm a man of God. I can never Let's fold. Go. All right. All right. All right. Here we go, brother. You ready? I guess not, huh? No, I am. Ah, there you are. All right. Welcome to the Protect Your Purpose podcast where we talk. Whiskey, business, friends, family, and freedom. I'm your host, Matt Marchese, and this is my co-host, Zach Grady. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? What's up, dude? It's Good. been a minute. Yeah, it has been a minute. Good to be back. And before we get started on anything, speaking of being a minute. I'm excited. What? Well, let's just start with this. Are we drinking today? <laughs> yes, sir. What are we drinking today? Fill uh, me up, whatever it is. I don't care what it is. I just want to drink it. This is the first show in... How long's it been, dude? Couple months. Couple All months. Right. Yeah, where I've been getting on the show saying we talk whiskey, business, friends, family, and freedom, and we don't talk about whiskey. Minus the whiskey. Yeah, it's been uh I've been longing for the whiskey. So what are we drinking today, buddy? Cheers. It's the house. Hey, here we go. Buffalo Trace. Oh, Buffalo Trace. Amen. Let's do this. A little cheers to you. Cheers to me. Cheers to the new years. Get a and the sniff deers, of it. And the deers and the ears. Oh, oh, Dr. Seuss over here. They call me Harry <laughs> Mac. Harry Matt. They call me Harry Matt. H. Matt. Okay, that's better. Yeah. All right, let's drink this thing. Mm. That was me drinking out of a hamster. Uh, no? Okay. Gross or what? Disturbing, yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, you you beat me to the sip. How is it? <sighs> Delicious. Man, I'm excited about this. Here we go. Yes, let's do this. Hopefully, our uh, our before I take this delicious first sip, I'm going to encourage all of our listeners, mm. except those that are in recovery or don't drink for whatever the reason is. No judgment here. As a matter of fact, I admire you. Great job. Just not my thing. Uh, I encourage you all to drink a whiskey with us on this one because we are celebrating in the studio. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to drink my first sip of whatever the hell this is, and I can't wait. Mm. Oh, yeah. Once it hits the lips. Oh, man, dude. So good. I miss this so much. Unfortunately... I already have my next fast planned. Mm -hmm. I think you do too, right? I do. We'll talk about it in a minute. And it's just getting harder and harder to drink when when you're trying to tighten up, you know, the lifestyle and the body. And so much of that involves disciplines that I just don't want to display. <laughs> it sucks. But whatever, I've if got... it was easy, everybody would be doing it, bro. That's right. I, I will tell you, I do feel... I do feel a lot more accomplished when I'm when I'm displaying those disciplines, although I do feel very empty when I am not drinking my delicious and beloved whiskey. So I don't know. Whatever. When's your next? What's your next fast plan? I am planning on doing it January first. Actually, I'm going to start. My goal is to do seven days. Like I'm trying to get a. Oh, you're going super long one in. Big. You're going big. But early. I've never gone more than a little over three. So we'll see how my body reacts, how I'm feeling. If it if it gets like too crazy, I'll obviously eat something. Listen, I'm no Joel Staley. Yeah, okay. Right. But here's what I will tell you. Um, a lot of our, our audience and listeners have been following some of our fasting since that episode of Joel, by yep. the way. Another shout out. I feel like I've given this guy a shout out fucking 10 times, <laughs> but that's because I got deep. He's an avid listener, though, so he hears them all. And and he's fucking awesome. So follow him not only if you're fasting. He is very in line with our life. What were you going to say? Go well, I was going to shout out the Winner's Win podcast. That's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. And he's got, yep, little... he's got his new pod or his own show now, his own new show, uh, Winner's Win he was very pissed off that we uh, we did an episode, I think, right? <laughs> Called Winners Win. Called yeah. Winners. He was like, you got to be kidding me. Anyway, follow that dude because he's awesome. He's smart, uh, but and he knows what the fuck is going on in the world. Actually, I was on it. He posted it today. Oh, you were on it? Yeah, we did I'm an supposed to. I was supposed to fucking. You'll get there. You'll get there. 
I'm just awful. He, he, I, I just didn't listen. I got to get it in the schedule. Uh, how was it? Was it good? Yeah. How'd you do? I think it turned out well. I haven't listened to it. What'd you guys talk yet, about? Um, not being a couch dad, be a active dad, get out, do fun shit. We call it cool fun shit. dad. Me and my brother, Krizza, we've got a, a joke. He's the fun dad. I'm the fucking lame dad. But you want to <laughs> be the, the goal is to be the fun dad. Not even necessarily fun. Just stay active. Stay. No, which is fun for keep, kids. Keep your, uh, that's what fun dad does, dude. Right. Fun dad does fun, active shit. Right. Lazy, shitty dad. Me. I'm just kidding. I'm not that bad. But my brother is like, Super we go. To, fun dad. Oh, yeah. We go to the ocean and he's boogie boarding in the first five minutes we're there with all the boys. And I'm like, and you know, yeah, I'm, <laughs> set, a, I'm setting tie. up a tent and sitting down in a chair under a tent. Like he is without a doubt the fun dad. And it's a, it's kind of an ongoing joke. And you also are the fun dad. I'm sure Joel's probably a fun dad, too. Active <clears throat> lifestyle. That's what you want to do. Right. That's but fun. that was the main topic. Dude, I'm fucking pumped about that. Yeah, and it aired cool. today? Yeah, he threw it out there today. Well, now everyone knows what day we're recording this. Oh, shit. Newsflash, again, for the <laughs> listeners. Not it, live. It isn't live. Anyhow, um, I don't remember. That's awesome. Shout out to him, but um, I'm excited to hear it. Oh, I'm sure you did a great job. You always do. Um, but for fasting, we've got a lot of people who have been sort of following us, and we've kind of dove into the fasting cycles and lifestyle and and, and again I'll, I'll i'll start by i'm no joel staley in this or doctor but i will tell you if you're going to go into a seven day fast preparation dude coming off of what what we just did mm -hmm. so lindy and i did that three day fast we did the 72 i think we went i don't know close to 80 hours or whatever it was mm -hmm. um but that was coming off of basically 75 plus days of every single day, literally not a day missed of at least a 16 hour fast, lots of 20s, lots of 24s. And then going into a 72 hour fast minimum, I don't want to say it was easy because it wasn't. But relatively speaking, we then broke that fast, finished our 75 hard, uh, which whatever we finished our program and then we went to iceland as you know and were with us and then i went to florida and then i basically came off of that fast came off of that program you know a couple weeks later went into continued fasting and then a couple weeks later came off the program and i i ate shit sandwiches for out the window. Oh, yeah. dude two straight weeks i basically just ate there's no discipline you know very little exercise and activity like the a complete lifestyle switch right we came off of that and immediately we're like, hey, I need, we need a reset. Back on the wagon. So we jumped right into a 48-hour fast. And the difference between coming off of every single day, 16, mm. 18, 20, 24-hour fast into a 48, 72-hour and going off of Nothing. shit sandwiches for two weeks into a 48-hour fast, I will tell you. A lot harder. Holy shit, dude. Like- Night and day. It's not even. It's not even close. It makes sense, though. So it makes sense. going into a a, a seven day or uh, wait, let's be clear on something. Are you committing to a? Are you committing? Committing? Are you committing to a seven day fast starting New Year's Day? Um. Yes. Uh, oof. He did it, folks. I said it, ladies and gentlemen. But we have a commitment. For seven days. If things, Dude, you can't. No, not if things. You can't fucking put this out. <laughs> You're right. To I our, can't put. I can't put. No. Can't put I'll, I'll tell you what. It. We'll cut that part out. I'll ask the question again. I'm gonna leave that part in. I'll ask the question again. Are you committing to a seven day fast starting New Year's Day? My plan is to go. At you least fancy ass. Days. Listen to me. But don't I, let I our audience. We, people guess, look up to you, bro. To answer the question, no, I can't commit to seven because I don't know how my body's going to react past okay. eighty. All right. So if what are you going to commit like, to? At least seventy-two for sure. All right. So I know I can do that. I've done that. So are you committing times. to a maximum seven days? No, not even that. Like if I feel good at seven, like I don't want to go too much longer because then you're talking, you know muscle loss, things like that. But seven days is is my goal. I think I can do it. It's going to suck a Man. lot. But if I'm getting my electrolytes, if I'm getting what I need, um, I, I think I'll be okay. Is there any you any movement on this? What do you mean? Can I sway you in a different direction? Like? <laughs> um, 
God. So I, here's where seven yeah. days came from. Um, Joel actually put out a podcast with a guy who did 21 days. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw. But like, then I Joel, saw a link on that. But I was Maybe talking. To me. I was talking to Joel about it, and he was like, "Yeah, dude, I was talking to a lot of people after seven days." Some people were seeing like parasites and stuff start coming out, like because you know how you've talked about like the cleanses and stuff where mm-hmm. people get parasites out and yeah, the, um, yeah, like coffee cleanse. My so wife. he was kind of saying, essentially, like he might he doesn't know this for sure, but he believes maybe they're getting starved out and they just yeah get they out. bail yeah. So I'm kind of curious if I can go seven days to see if anything like that happens. Are you willing to move this plan at all? Because I want to participate. I think I think it would be awesome if we did it together. Um, I know Lindy is on board, but it, it cannot be for us for oh, January 1st. Oh, I see. I, see, um, I, see. I can do a January 1st fast. I could do a three-day. But you got something else. Yeah, I want to, I, I've got our, our company Christmas party on the 5th um, right. that I'd like to... I'd like to not be you need to starving myself. In. I'd, sure. Right. In addition to that, I'd also like to make sure that I'm not, I don't go through any down cycles of, you know, feeling lethargic or, or slow. I'd like, and I don't anticipate that because after, you know, three days and some change, dude, energy feels is good. high, feels feeling good. good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not willing to commit to a seven day early on because starting on the first, a, a five day puts me at my Christmas party. In sure. addition to that, I know how fragile now with, with this experience my my body is coming breaking a fast. You got to be I, careful. I'd probably be willing to commit to like eighty hours starting, you know, midnight ish on uh, on January first. You know, I don't think I need to do it, and that, and that was why I led in with that question. By the way, for you is are you are you committing to that starting? Oh, because if if you're starting that, you're not wanting to start a fast off of a, a hot new year's eve right 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 so your new your new year's eve is going to be the plans yeah we'll see how the plans go they call you mellow yellow <laughs> you're gonna be lame as shit on new year's y'all gonna be in bed before the ball drops i but, mean the last couple of years I, feel, I think i have been anyway so all i'm saying is a seven day fast i i, I i'm going to encourage you not that you wouldn't to prep for that yeah um mm-hmm. a three-day fast i think if, if you're you, I think you're gonna burn through a three. Have you ever done a? Did you do that? You do, you did the three day. How'd you feel? Um, towards the end, I was kind of a little sluggish, but I don't think I I like electrolytes properly. I didn't do any of that properly, and I wasn't I wasn't as prepared as I. Could Are you doing been. a water fast? You gonna do bone broth? I'll drink water. Water only, no and bone elect- broth. Electrolytes. I don't know about bone broth. No. So I think what what the did that help you? You think? So I, I I I read up on it a little further. I dove a little deeper into it. So autophagy is the mm. the, the the level of body processing. I guess you're you're desiring, so you can your body can start you know eating itself. I guess is is what that phase is or that stage is. Um, and I've done not extensive research, but I think a little bit enough to to understand that what bone broth does is it provides you a little bit of caloric value without spiking your insulin. Surely that matters person to person, body to body to body. You know, I don't know. I think there's a way you can measure it. One of those little arm sticky things and measure your insulin. Once Uh it spikes, I think it's over. Um, Did it help? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it's, uh, it's something, you know, you add, a little salt and pepper to it. I think your insulin doesn't spike. It provides you a little bit of caloric value. There's a lot of value in it. Um, surely under the um, you know guidance of a of a doctor or somebody who is monitoring your your blood sugar levels. and and yeah and all, all your your levels. I think that's how I want to do a seven day. I think I want to do it under um, supervision supervision of a of a medical professional. That's uh, where they're where they're monitoring it, and be- I, I may be overzealous, dude. Like I may get to day four or five sure. and be like, I just I'm not going to make it. But here's what I'm going to throw out for you. I'm going to throw this out for you. I'm going to throw this out for our audience. Uh, I think January first, Lindy and I are going to do. We just did a 48. We did the the 72. Uh, I think Lindy and I are going to go into another three day. I'm willing to commit. I think we talked about doing it on the second, but I think with the timing, I'm probably going to want to go into the earlier. The earlier, yep. Mm-hmm. Something going on 
on at least starting at some point, maybe not midnight on the first. I think probably starting in the afternoon or at some point on the first would be great. Um, and then going into a few days and then so going into that, preparing and then going into some shorter fasts, some 18s and some 16s and 20s and then leading into a big fatty. A big fatty. Yeah, like oh, a five yeah. five to seven day. We've committed to doing a five day, not a seven day. But I think five what... Day, yeah, that's a good one too. I think what we're looking at is five to seven. So yeah, willing to commit to, hey, I've done a three. I knew I can go another day on the three. Uh, I knew I could go another day or two when we did the two. I believe five is, is going to be challenging, doable, mm-hmm. uh, with very little concern health-wise. Right. Um, and I think seven is probably the top end I would want to push it. Yeah, I agree. Because I want to yeah. learn. You know, and I've enjoyed that part of fasting is kind of learning what how I my feel. body reacts to things. Yep, how I feel at certain stages, how my bowel movements go, my body's processing. I'm excited to get deep into that level, like when your body starts expelling shit. But As eventually there's nothing left in there. Right. Yeah. I also read that, um, also something that we might want to talk to Joel about, doing a cleanse, like um, doing a cleanse prior to a fast, so kind of cleaning out your digestive tract and and... Yeah. Like, yeah, doing like an emodium or, or something that making yourself shit and clearing out as much as you can and going into a fast with a clear gut, um, I heard is is much better for bowel movements for the fast. I don't know. So a dude, lot of fasting talk. Dude, we are not supposed to be talking about fasting in this episode, <laughs> and I'm I'm quite confident we've spent 20 minutes doing it. But either way, I think it's uh it's fun. Yeah. All right. So you're it's committed. Challenging. You're committed. Yeah, it's hard shit, man. Mm-hmm. Doing the hard shit. That's uh, winners. Uh, I heard somebody say one time, "There's no greater form of discipline than not eating when you're hungry." Mm. It's tough. Who'd you hear say that? I don't know. I don't remember. I, I, heard I, it somewhere. I can agree for for at least most people. Like it's difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, I did hear my wife tell the kids yesterday, tell Cash yesterday. He was like, can we stop on the way home at, at Hy-Vee and just get some food so I can eat? And Lindy responds with, I didn't eat for three days. Shut up. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> your kids always think if they're hungry, they're going to die immediately. Right. <laughs> Ugh, I'm hangry. No, that is people who say they're hangry have never gone three days without eating. <laughs> and you don't even know. Right. And that's a mindset, man. It's you, you get hangry when you're when your mind is expecting to eat. But when you're like, well, not eating till Thursday. Right. And it's Monday. You don't really get hangry. You know, uh, a, a sort of a mindset Lindy and I took during ours, and I think you did too, was anytime I got hungry, instead of focusing on the shitty part of being hungry, we opted to lean into it and kind of embrace the suck, if you will, and be like, yeah, it's working. Like every yeah. time I got hungry, I know that that's when shit is happening, especially after like the 48 hour mark when you start getting into that good, good. Um, so that helped a lot, just a mindset, dude. Right. And this last time, we're like, well, it's Monday. We're not eating until Wednesday. Um, for me, it just just knowing that the target isn't anywhere near. Keep busy. Yeah. It's like the concept of when you got to go to the bathroom, and then as you pull in your driveway, it gets worse and worse. And like <laughs> yeah. you always make it in the last possible yeah. second without actually <laughs> shitting yourself or pissing your pants. And that's Your because, body knew it was time. Yeah. It's because your brain told it it's close. Yeah. And, and then it's the same with eating. Yep. But yeah, it takes, takes a strong M effort to not eat when you're hungry. I could tell it you that much. Oh, anyway, okay. moving along, we have started this show without saying thank you, uh, without telling people what we do here. Um, thank you for following us. Thank you for all of the love and support you've given us throughout our journey. We, uh, we, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you for the shares, the likes, the subscriptions, and all the, all the shit that you're doing. So continue to do that. Share the show, like the show, subscribe, and, uh, and certainly listen to our podcast on all of the places you can find podcasts. Well done. Spotify, whatever. Apple. You know. Yeah, those places. So, And if you don't, if you listen to a podcast somewhere and you can't find the Protect Your Purpose podcast, reach out. Let us know. We'll get it there. 
Yes, sir. On to so today we're gonna do a standard episode. We're going to uh, we're gonna we're, we got some topics to discuss. We got some stuff I want to hear your opinions about. <clears throat> oh shit! Here mm-hmm. comes my opinions. Mm-hmm. All right, what's the first topic? Let's go, dude. I want to start with the shit going on in Colorado. That's all I have to say. You know where I'm going. All right. What do you think about the Supreme Court deciding to take Donald Trump off the ballot, the 2024 ballot? What do you think? And God, dude. I, I, I'm going to, you know, starting this show off with such good energy and such positivity, I'm going to do my best to to not. We'll end it that way, too. I just A little d- shit sandwich, if you will. Dude, I just don't. It, it, it's so infuriating. And me being uh, the, the person, and I know I often get accused of this, and, and I, I play it up, too, because I like pissing people off who <laughs> judge me. You know, I'll fuck around and wear a Trump sweatshirt just for a rise, even though I'm not. You know, you, everyone knows I don't. I don't fully trust this guy. I don't know if he's a part of the show or not. Right. Um, hard to trust. Same with Musk. Same with Alex Jones. I mean, it's everybody. I I truly don't. I barely trust you. Um, Fair. That's not true. I trust you, but I've known you since before you were famous. True. That's true. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I can trust you. <laughs> um, before you were a big podcaster. You know, just getting. I'm not letting it go to my head. Man. Yeah, spots. Yeah, I know. You walked in here with your your hat size is one or two little notches bigger on that little backwards cap. Guess who got invited to winners win? That's right. Good for you though. So, um, I don't know, man. I, here, I, here's my thought. My instant thoughts when I saw this was theater. This is one way to div- further divide a country. Sure. Um, and I don't know that there is any greater show of division within the United United States of America than dividing us by state, which is not the United States anymore. It's now no, the divided yeah. states. Yeah, exactly. By mm. removing the front runner presidential candidate former president from the ballot like there's no there's no better way to show a divided united states than by literally taking the presidential candidate off of the ballot and so what that does explain this to me though like mm-hmm. cuz i don't understand i'm fucking so dumb when it comes to all this shit man mm-hmm. so they're taking so when people go to vote in colorado Donald Trump. Donald Trump's name will not be on the ballot. Yeah. Is that how this is working? So, y- y- therefore, he can't get the he's electoral not gonna, votes. He's not going to win Colorado. No, yeah. it's over. You can't. What that means is, and he, here's how I see this playing out. And I don't. I don't fully know how this work either. I don't understand it's how never a been state done. can do that. Yeah, it's never been done. Right. Okay, so hold on. Before I get to that, yeah, go ahead. Hold that thought though. Really hold it because I'll forget. Okay. Um. Before I even get to that fact, I, I'm I'm stuck on. The, the conspiracy aspect of it. Is this all a show? Surely the U.S. Supreme Court's going to fucking shoot Take this Take it down. down. Right. right. So what's the point? In a world where I believe they truly, they truly have a goal of dividing the United States and destroying the United States. Dude, no better way to do it. So here's how I think this shakes out. I don't think it's, it's pe- I think people that in Say Colorado. Now, I understand that there's other states now that that are now I I read somewhere like maybe 16 states. Of course, California's punk asses are going to hop on this stupid train before I do this. Here's how I think this might shake out again. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. because I don't think it's ever been done. But before I dive into that, I think I think how this shakes out is all of the people that are in Colorado that. They already believe their vote doesn't count because they're so radically left that, it, you know, you're outnumbered 80 to 1 or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, your vote doesn't count. Like, when, same on the flip side. When you're in South Dakota, if you're a blue vote, like, might as well not count. Florida used to be one of those swing states. Now Florida's red as fuck. Vote doesn't count in Florida. If you're a Democrat, you'll never win it. Right. You know, they're little isolated counties. Overwhelming majority of the state of Florida is going to be red. Now, 
I think how this would play out is the people who already feel voiceless in Colorado, last straw, Colorado gets emptied of Republicans. If you take voters and you take away their right to vote for any candidate right. on one side, you have a mass exodus, you have a mass mutiny, perhaps. Best case scenario. Worst case scenario, it's the tipping point. And I, I'm afraid that that's what they're trying to do. I'm a, they know this isn't going to stick. What I'm afraid they're trying to do is incite the highest level of violence, action from that side to the point of revolution, perhaps, where, of course, end game, they can disarm us. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this doesn't turn out in, in, a, in a manner that people are so fed up that they resort to violence, and now we have violence on both sides, and then they have the justification to disarm us. I don't know that it's going to work. I think too many people are awake now. But this is all... You know, what could, what couldn't, let's, let's not miss the actual point of this. This is all based on the 14th Amendment, whatever, where they're, uh, they're claiming he was, yes. So rule three, 14th Amendment, blah, 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 based on Trump inciting an insurrection. Whether or not Trump incited it, if you believe that this was an insurrection, you are the problem. What we saw on January 6th wasn't an insurrection. It was a protest. And the protesters were incited by people, whoever they were, that were there strategically to rile them up. To incite. To incite. <laughs> okay. And get them into the Capitol in which there are videos of every fucking entrance of Capitol Police officers ushering people Come into on it. Come in, everybody. Hear me out, team. Hear me out, audience. Like, if they were trying <sighs> to do this, if this was intentional, wouldn't it be an amazing idea to fake an insurrection, fake this big bullshit, pump it up from a media standpoint, and then they can use that, weaponize it to get rid of Donald Blame Trump. Blame it on the public enemy number one. Right! Like, if this were their goal, wouldn't that be a great way of doing it? Do you think it just happened that Crushed way? Crushed it. You nailed it. Right. Give me a... Whoa, whoa. Fill me up here, buddy. Give me just a little bit more. I'm. Just, yeah. You're doing good, though. You're drinking today. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot, a lot, dude. And and the plot, like, I cannot believe the plot is still thickening from this bullshit. Once, yeah. Insur I'm doing the air quotes for everybody, you know, can't see us. Insurrection. You watch the video. Tucker Carlson actually just released um, on, you know, on X or whatever, Tucker on X, uh, an interview, a new interview with the guy that he did an interview on before he left Fox. You haven't you seen okay. it? Okay, uh-uh. Dude, check it out. And yeah. I, ha I haven't even gotten to dive into the whole thing. I, I caught like the first maybe 10, 15 minutes of it, whatever it was. Um, it, so Tucker left Fox. They shit canned him. Right. right before this was already shot, right before it was supposed to air, they pulled the plug on Tucker. So he didn't know that, and that's how he starts off his show. Like, I didn't know that. It was done, so we're going to redo the interview. And here I am. So he did his own interview where this guy, who basically is the Capitol Police Chief, and he gives detailed, bro, detailed like you've never seen, like detailed like he knew what was going Blowing on. Blowing the lid off this thing. Blowing the lid off of it by, by explaining that he was denied uh, National Guard support by none other than Nancy Pelosi oh, and Chuck Schumer. Shocker. Right. Um, explaining this and then to like, just all, all the audience has to do, all we as 
brain, you know, function, high functioning Americans, humans, humans with complex thought process, supposable thumbs. We're not fucking monkeys. All we have to do is listen to that Tucker, Tucker Carlson episode or watch it. Go look at the footage of what it was. Does it match? Does it match? Okay. And then look at what the accusations are and then look at the results on what they are now claiming and they're literally taking out the president out of the presidential race. <clears throat> the options are as we or the the potential options are as we just discussed. I mean, you're talking full-blown revolution. You're talking civil war. The only reason it's not a civil war is because nobody's fighting. We're at war. Yeah. And and I'm just hopeful, man. I, I want to end my thoughts on this with number one. Like this is such bullshit. It it is comical at this point. And and if you think conspiracy theorists are crazy, like give me a break. How did we know this was going to happen? <laughs> like it, once you understand, it's it's like watching a bad movie. Uh, you, yeah, you see the plot forming on, in front man. of your eyes. You know the way this ends. Yeah. You know, the bad guy gets taken down. And, 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 and. It, it's a movie. It's theater. And I can't believe there are still people who are calling this an insurrection. Like, I just can't believe it. Uh, aside from all that other shit that is totally a, a banana republic where they're literally taking down, arresting the front runner for politics for governing the entire United States of America. They're literally taking him down with the most bullshit, you know, political persecution you can uh, imagine. And there are still people doing it on this event. Yeah. Th what do I think of it? I think it's the most saddening, disheartening thing I could possibly imagine happening to our beloved United States of America. I love this democracy. State of Dude, it's awful. Our constitution is being challenged. I I'm just I'm just happy that it's as strong of a document as it actually is. And I'm also, uh, like I said, I wanted to end and this my views on this <clears throat> on a on a high note, and that is, man, I don't even think the Democrats believe this shit anymore. I think there's there's the the Uniparty, there's the globalists. I think there's the people who are completely fucking brainwashed. We call them the useful idiots. Yep. If you are listening to this show and you believe that that was an insurrection that took place on January 6th, I would ask you one thing. Do you think it is possible, possible, that the government or somebody, something, somebody, some group of individuals could or would stage something to push a political agenda. Do you think that's even possible? If you do believe that is a possibility, rather. There you go. I encourage you to ask yourself another question. Is it possible that I am a useful idiot, that I have been tricked? And then go through the phases or stages that we just talked. Go watch the Tucker episode. Go watch the footage. See if everything matches. And then look at this banana republic that we are living in, and hopefully by that point you'll wake up and be like, damn. Two things there, though. One, okay. what do you got? idiots probably don't realize that. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, <laughs> I hate to call people idiots, but it... But also, if they did realize it, probably would be hesitant to admit it, you know. Um, swallow their pride, if you will, and actually admit at this point. Like, they've gone this long believing one thing and then admitting you're... It's tough for people to do, man, but it's necessary. It's I know, necessary. bro, but you remember the, you remember that it's like a funny joke, like, oh, if every group has one annoying person, and if if you are in that group, and there you isn't, can't spot the annoying and, person, right? It's you. It's you. You know, every group <laughs> has one. You know, it's time. It's time. I do it. I'm like, I, I look at things, and I I size myself up against others, and I size myself up against. You know what I'm the information I'm being delivered. Make no mistake about it. I'm being delivered information every day, everywhere you turn around, every aspect of social media, television, news, all things. We're being delivered information. I look at it and go, damn, am I am I a part of this? Like I I look at things objectively and try and see, am I wrong on my beliefs? Challenge yourself. All I'm asking you is, even if you know for a fact what you believe is true, 
Challenge yourself. Check it out. Check it out. Just check it out. Is it a possibility? And the answer is, dummies, it 100% is a possibility because anything's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a, I'm going to go as, I'm going to go super radical. Is it a possibility that the earth is flat? Sure. Sure. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Call me what you want. You now, you know, everyone's going to call me a flat earther. They're going to talk all sorts of shit about us. Whatever. It's a possibility. Anything's possible, right? Haven't you heard that your whole life? Anything's possible if you set your <laughs> mind to it. Yeah, anything's possible. Is it possible that dinosaurs never existed? 100%. Anybody ever seen a dinosaur? <laughs> nope. Ask a paleontologist. They're going to be like, nope, no chance. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, they all subscribe to the same shit. Whatever. Is it possible? Sure. If you can get to the conclusion that it's possible that you've been tricked and that J6 was not an actual insurrection and they did that to get them here today where they knew Donald Trump was going to be a front runner. Mm -hmm. They knew if they could pump that up enough and convince enough of the United States population, they could try to remove him from the ballot whether they succeed or not they might have known they weren't but if they can divide us united mission we st- accomplished that's bro. it dude they don't really need him to be off the ballot they right. just need to divide us further i was also the reason i was asking the question initially and you already kind of answered it like what was the point of it like it's not yeah. <clears throat> it's not getting past colorado like the supreme court's not going to approve that come on but no way but if they divide us but yeah, I guess that is the that is the point. Dude, the other question is do they know that? Okay. And Trump is a part of this mm. and he got on that stage and towed that line just enough to where it could be a controversy to where you can take two sides of it. This is where I go way down the rabbit hole. Yeah, dude, you can. It's, I mean, it's... Bro, it's totally... Is it a possibility? Boom, that was it. <laughs> is it possible? And if you don't think that it's possible that Trump is a good We're cop... We're all fucking tricked. We're, right? We're all tricked. I look at the same thing with Vivek. Ramaswamy, where the fuck did this guy come from? And he's on like... Dude, this guy's doing it better than anybody ever has. He's like... Oh, yeah. On the podcast yeah. scene. Yep. I saw he was at uh, AmFest at a America Fest, which is all just a bunch of bullshit anyway. A bunch of rhinos getting together and you know conservative influencers getting together and pumping out more propaganda that they're a part of. They don't even understand they are. Div- division, divisiveness, sure. Sure. led by none other than Ted Cruz. But Vivek Ramaswamy gets on stage and tells uh, some CNN anchor, I forget his name, shut the fuck up. It was so, have you seen it? No. Oh, I'm God, looking that up, dude. It's so good. It's so money. He's like, what? He tells him, because this guy, I forget his name, he he makes a comment about Vivek is, is uh, you know, Trump is going to die in a few years, whatever, but Vivek is is young, and he's a this and that, and, you know, he's a modern-day Trump that we're, Trump that we're going to have to deal with for 40 more years or whatever because he's so young. And Vivek quoted him and then goes, all I have to say is shut the fuck up. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, dude. But... Vivek is is too perfect. Dude, this guy is speaking the people's language and he is on Trump's D. He loves Trump. He's supporting him. I think if Mm. Trump knew if if this is all if what we're seeing isn't all political theater, including but not limited to Vivek and Trump. Mm -hmm. I think Trump not putting that guy on uh, on the ballot is a big mistake. Um, Maybe there's a lot still to unfold. You know, we got we got some time, but. For now, dude, that guy is grinding, and he is connecting with the youth. He's on the podcast scene. He's doing, you know, YouTube shorts. He's building the. He gets it. The yeah. lifestyle brand. Mm-hmm. He's talking that shit. He's calling them calm. Like he's calling out what they can, and he's so fluent, bro. I don't know, man. Here, I-D-K. Yeah, I don't. E- I don't know either. Here's what I will tell you: is I know the solution. Hit me. Get your shit in order. Get your household in order. Get your finances in order. Get your food sources in order. Get your lifestyle in order. 
Start doing hard shit. Start growing. Be ready for attacks. You know, who knows what's going to happen? It'd be very easy to make the world burn. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the solution is very simple. Get your shit together. Your mental health, your physical health, your financial health, and your friends and community. I'm a part of uh, a, a, a entrepreneur organization. Is what it's called, EO. Talked about it before on the show. Mm-hmm. Every month we go together, we get together. A bunch of business owners get together, sort of a monthly mastermind. We lock ourselves in a room for five, six hours, solve the world's problems, sometimes quite literally. Every month we go through a format. It's our, our monthly update. And the first thing we do is we rate our month. Where we are, right there, we rate. We rate on a scale of one to ten, five being average, you know, just normal. Uh, one being fucking awful, implosion, you know, waving the flag, sounding the alarms, and ten being, man, I am on a beach chilling with a cocktail. You know, little flower, umbrella, all that shit. We rate these four things. Mental health, physical health, financial health, and friends and community. And not until recently did I realize, dude, that's what these these people got it together. Right. Whoever created this format, like those are the most important things. And in all aspects of turmoil and challenge that we may face, be it a cyber attack, a power grid attack, a nuclear attack, whatever it could be, what do you what do you want to have in order? You want to have your mental health in order. You want to have your financial health in order. You want to have your physical health in order, and, and you certainly want to have your friends and community dialed in. All of the above. Right. So when I say get your house in order, that's what I mean. Mental health, physical health, financial health, and friends and community, your group, your people, your tribe. Get your shit together um, and latch onto those things, man. Those are really great if you're, if you're looking for purpose. I think any one of those, all of them, you should have a, a core purpose aligned one in each one. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Maybe we add that. Maybe we do that to our life. Anyway, all right, what's your next? You got anything else to add to that crazy radical shit? No. I don't know, man. Banana Republic, bullshit, insane. Get your household in order. Get yourself in order. And don't buy into the bullshit. The people should be able to vote if they don't want Donald Trump or if they do want Donald Trump. And, and the people should... We're a democracy, man. You should have the option. That's right. And if, if who we as a country decide is who we want and the current government doesn't believe that that's who we should. That's a problem. It, does, <laughs> right. it doesn't mean we shouldn't have the option because that's not how we roll. Anyway, listen, man, I think, uh, I, think we've talked, uh, I think we've talked enough for today. Yeah. We added some value, maybe some perspective on some shit. Um, either way, listen. I, I I'm I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. I'm more optimistic now than I probably have been in in a long time. I think people are awake to this shit, man. I think Trump's poll numbers going up. The more radical these people get, and the more they try to control. I think it's human nature, specifically with Americans, to avoid being controlled on all sides of the aisle. I think there's enough information out there for people to make really good, um, you know sound decisions on at least just saying hey let me choose i know? think even like you had said even most democrats will agree with that like yeah why Get are we taking here. people off the ballot right that's what are un-american we, what are we doing that's very un-american and and very crazy and very radical yes uh and and i'm i'm just hopeful that you know they're gonna tie that up also uh Intermittent fasting, long-term fasting, diet, exercise, limiting your... Do your, your research. Get yeah, after it. Your alcohol intake. Uh, talking about getting your household in order, getting your, your mental health and your physical health in, in order. Um, those lifestyle changes. That's a good way to start. Yeah, absolutely. Clear your head. Those, uh, that clear head and that, that energy will also help you um, attract friends and community mm-hmm. and uh, dial in on that as well as dial in on the, on the financial health. So I think... Um, I think we added some value. If you're not eating, you're not spending money on food. Right. 
You're saving money. <laughs> you're saving time. You're, you're, yeah, reallocate that energy, that time. Listen, yeah. we all know it. Anyway, thank you all for, uh, for following the show. Thank you for listening. We appreciate all your love and support as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, please continue to share the show. Follow us wherever you find your podcast. Until next time, find your purpose, serve your purpose, and protect your purpose, people. Peace. Peace.